<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast I really go for. He's enjoying his Quaker puffed wheat. Looks good, too. It is good. Right. And so is Quaker puffed rice. These giants ready to serve grains of wheat or rice are choice, flavor-rich, premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you, too. Makes a nourishing, economical, deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. Tomorrow, sure, try this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The cold, bleak winds of winter blew over the Yukon Territory, and Sergeant Preston, seated before the blazing fire in his cabin at Selkirk, put down the book he was reading and looked up expectantly at his great dog, King, as he arose from his place before the fire and growled. What is it, King? What do you hear? Huh? So that's it. Heard someone coming. <laughs> Stay back, fella. Hey, Sergeant. Well, Judd Handy, come in out of the cold. Hey, how about bringing in my dog? Of course, but you better hold his collar until he and King get acquainted. It's a sea dog, Sergeant. Mighty fine one. Uh-huh. I have her here for the collar. Come on, Whitey, come on. Quiet, King. Come here, fella. Easy now. Well, King likes her, Jed. Yep, Whitey seems to like King. I can let go over now. For a moment, the two dogs stood appraising each other. And then, as if mutually satisfied that they would be friends, they went over and curled up near the fireplace. Why, Thunder, I think they do like each other, Sergeant. Yes, it looks that way. Whitey is a fine dog, Jed. Where'd you get her? Well, I found her about two months ago, lying along the trail. Somebody had beaten her mighty bad and left her to die. I can't imagine anyone doing a thing like that. Well, I took her to my cabin and nursed her back to health. I could see that Whitey had a lot of spirit. <laughs> She still has. That's right. You find all types of men up this way, as you well know, Sergeant. But anybody who'd mistreat a dog would do most anything, to my way of thinking. I agree with you, Jed. Oh, uh, I was wondering. I have to make a trip up Indian Creek. And since Whitey isn't broke the harness yet, I don't want to take her with me. Could you see your way clear to taking care of her till I get back? Why, of course, Jed. I'll take care of her. (laughs) There's no one else I'd rather leave her with than you. As long as Whitey and King get along, so You well. take your trip and don't worry about Whitey. Oh, uh, better put up the night here and then start out in the morning. The following morning, Jed left on his trip. King and Whitey were continually together, and the great dog took sort of a protective attitude toward the white husky that he came to look upon as his mate. One night, the constable came to Sergeant Preston's cabin. Easy, fella. Hello, Sergeant. Dave Holder, come in. Sergeant, the bank has been robbed. I need your help. Of course. When did it happen? About an hour ago. Two men held it up. They shot the teller and made off with two sacks of gold. About $10,000 worth. I tried to trail them, but I lost the trail. I see. I'll get my parka and King and I'll go along with you. We'll go to the bank first and try to pick up the trail from there. All right, King. Come on, fella. We'll leave Whitey here. Come on, King. Stay there, Whitey. We'll be back soon. Let's go, Dave. Meantime, two men who had passed along the trail in front of Preston's cabin some time before the constable had arrived 
were mushing along through the cold Yukon night. A light driving snow had begun to fall. It'll be a long way from Selkirk by morning, Bill. Yeah, I guess so. You think the constable will be able to trail us, Chuck? Ah, don't worry about that. Nobody saw us pull that bank job. The teller won't be able to talk. <laughs> we robbed that bank at just the right time. Most everybody in town was eating supper and the teller was alone. Yeah, those Mounties are pretty good at following a trail, you know. This trail is well-traveled. What's more, with the snow beginning to fall, our tracks will soon be covered so nobody can see them. Oh, we'll get away all right. Must say! Must you, must you. For a short time after Sergeant Preston and King had left with the constable, Whitey paced the cabin restlessly. Whitey's inclination had been to rush out after King when the door had been opened. But she had learned from King that Preston's commands must be obeyed. So she had stayed as he had ordered. Yet she wanted to be with King. And she whined impatiently at being shut in the cabin. Going to the door, Whitey barked. Then, time after time, she leaped at the latch. Until finally her chance came. Her big paw struck the latch and disengaged it. As the latch disengaged, the force of the wind outside did the rest. And the door swung open. With a joyous bark, Whitey sprang out the door. On the trail, she stopped and put her nose to the snow-covered ground to get King's scent. Then Whitey growled. For another scent had come to her sensitive nose. The scent of the man who had beaten her so unmercifully two months before. Her anxiety to be with King was overcome by the feeling of hatred that welled up inside her. With hair bristling, she stood a moment looking down the trail toward town in the direction King had gone. And then with a savage bark, Whitey turned and headed up trail. <laughs> Meantime, at the bank, Sergeant Preston and the constable led King to the back door of the bank through which the crooks had left. They went out the back way here, Sergeant. I could follow the trail a short way, but when they got back on the main trail, I lost it. I see. Here, King. Do you think King will be able to pick up the trail? I'm sure he will. All right, fella. Find them. Find them, King. There he goes. Come on. King's going in the direction of the trail that passes your cabin. Yes. Get your team, constable. I'll stop at my cabin and get mine, too. No telling how long we'll have to trail those cooks. King! Come back here, boy. For the moment, Sergeant Preston called King back. Then the two Mounties went to the constable's headquarters, where the constable got his dog sled. Within a short time, they were ready to follow King on the trail of the bank robbers. There. I'm ready to start now, Sergeant. Good. We know now that the crooks took the trail that passes my cabin. <laughs> All right, King. Now you can go, boy. Find them, King. Find them. Let's go, Dave. Right. Mush! Mush, you husky! A short time later, Sergeant Preston and the constable approached Preston's cabin where they had left Whitey. There's your cabin up just ahead. Ho, oh, oh, ho, husky! What? The door is open. King saw the door open and came in. Whitey's gone. I guess she managed to unlatch the door somehow. Yes. Can't imagine where Whitey might have gone. I felt sure by this time she'd try to find King. She did get out. I should think so, but we didn't see her on the way up here. That's true. And now King's liable to follow her scent instead of the crook, Sergeant. King thinks a lot of Whitey. King! King! There he goes. Come on, we'll follow him. King's running up the trail. Yes. This is the first time he's disobeyed me. We'll follow him. We don't know for sure now that he's following the crooks. But we do know they went up trail. Come on, I'll harness my team. For some distance, King followed Whitey's scent up the trail. Then he stopped and stood for a moment whining. The intelligent dog instinctively knew he had done wrong to disobey his master's command. And now he was undecided between his desire to find Whitey and the result of the long training that taught him to obey Sergeant Preston. He looked up trail a moment and then gave a long, mournful howl. Then, turning dejectedly, he started slowly back along the trail to find his master. A short time later, he heard the dog teams coming and saw Sergeant Preston and the constable in the distance. Oh, oh there, well, King must have lost what he sent. No, I don't think so. He knew he disobeyed me, didn't you, fellow? Find those men, King. Find them. On, you husky! What? What's there?
As time went on, the storm increased in intensity, and the snow fell heavily, slowing the progress of the two crooks, Chuck and Bill. Chuck, I... I gotta take it easy. I can't keep up this pace. We're going slow enough as it is because of this storm. We hope to get through to White Horse. We gotta push on while we can. Boy, the snow gets too deep for traveling. And let me get on the sled. Come on, Chuck, it out. Nothing doing. The dogs have all they can do now to pull the sled. With you on it, we might get caught up with if anyone is trailing. No! Oh! Oh! oh. Chuck! Chuck, wait. I, I turned my ankle. Wait. Ha-ha. That's your hard luck, Bill. I can't waste time with you. Anyway, I can use your share of that gold. No. Must you, Husky? Must Chuck, you. wait, please. Come back, Chuck. No. As Chuck went out of sight along the trail, Bill slowly got to his feet. The sobs of fear that started to rise in his throat were overpowered by the anger he felt against Chuck. I, a dirty double crosser. I'll get through somehow. I'll get back at him if it takes me a lifetime. Oh, my ankle. I can't rest a little weight on it. I have to keep moving. I might freeze to death if I don't. Oh. Food. Chuck has the food. I have to find a cabin before I starve. With slow, painful steps, Bill limped along the snow-packed trail. Gradually, the snowfall lightened and then stopped altogether. In spite of the pain, the man moved slowly along, feeling that he didn't dare to pause for rest. Half an hour went by, and the wind lessened a bit. Finally, Bill had to stop. Uh, uh, I have to rest a bit. Oh, my ankle is swelling. I won't be able to go on much longer. Uh, uh, that howl. It's wolves. Uh, I have to go on. They'll follow me. They are following me. The wolves. They'll get me. I know they will. I haven't even a gun. I'm done for. I'm done for. <laughs> we'll continue our story in just a moment. Man, oh man, fellas and girls, there's nothing like it. Uh-oh. It's oh, really nothing. something. I mean enjoying a breakfast of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. Uh-oh, there he goes again. Huh? Who said that? Me. You? Where are you? Here. Matter of fact, I stick pretty close to you all the time. You do? Well, I don't see it. Gee, what do you look like? Oh, very much like you. Huh? But where are you? Down here. I don't see anything except my shadow. Well, that's me. You're my shadow? Sure. Well, now look, shadow, there's a time for everything. I've got work to do, my job here, and, and I... Go right ahead. I love it. You do? You like hearing me tell about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice? Sure do. Well, then, like I was saying, these glorified, ready-to-serve premium grains of wheat or rice are shot from guns. They're actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting, crisp and tender... Talk about good. And say, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are good for you, too. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, Jay. Yeah, Shadow. What's on your mind? I was wondering. What about? Wondering why you have to tell folks that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are delicious. Huh? Well, all you have to do is buy a package of each kind and try them. Ha, <laughs> ha, That's right. Fellas and girls, see for yourselves. Ask Mom to buy those big red and blue packages of Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. They're shot from guns. Now to continue our story. The lame and frightened bank robber wasn't the only one to hear the howling of the wolf pack. A short distance down the trail, Whitey, the white husky, also heard the howling. She stopped and turned, with hair bristling and a snarl on her lips. 
Whitey could see the vague, dark gray shapes moving toward her. First one, then another, and another. She bared her teeth in a snarling growl, and then she stood her ground, and instinctive fear moved through her body, and she raised her head to give forth a long, wailing howl. Some distance away, far down the trail, the great dog King ran far in front of Preston and the constable. Suddenly, he stopped and stood listening. King knew the danger of a wolf pack, and he knew, too, that the gun his master, Sergeant Preston, carried had many times in the past frightened them off. The intelligent dog turned and was about to start back to Preston when he heard another howl. A different howl, which he recognized as a distress call of the dog he looked upon as a mate, the dog his master and others called Whitey. For a moment, the great dog stood undecided. Then he raised his head in an answering cry and headed up the trail to help Whitey. Down trail, Sergeant Preston and the constable had stopped a moment to rest. Father, father. Oh, oh. The king is out of sight around the bend in the trail. Yes. What? You hear that? Oh, sounds as if they're tracking something. That's King. Come on, let's hurry. Hun! Hun! You have splash! Splash there! As the wolf pack moved nearer, Bill the Crook tried at first to increase his pace, but the pain in his ankle was too great. He turned aside and limped to a ridge along one side of the trail. That ridge, I, I can put my back to that and face the wolves, and, and they can't spring on me from behind. Stopping at the ridge, Bill turned to face the dreaded wolf pack. In spite of the cold, perspiration stood out on his forehead because of the fear that seemed to stifle him. Then he heard a different sound. Uh, that sounded like, like a dog. It is a dog. A big white one. Oh, oh, maybe the wolves will go after the dog and let me alone. As Bill, fascinated in spite of his fear, watched, Whitey moved away from the approaching wolves, bringing her closer to the place where he stood. But her retreat was a signal for the pack to close in, and running in a semicircle, the wolves started after the white husky. Realizing the hopelessness of retreating, Whitey stopped and turned to face them, and gave out with a long, wailing howl. The great dog, King, raced along the trail at top speed. He rounded a bend in the trail just as the wolves had started to close in on Whitey, and he saw and heard her when she stopped to face them. King was intelligent enough to know the danger of a snarling, hungry wolf pack, but the cry of the dog he considered his mate urged him on in a burst of fury. As he sped toward Whitey, he barked encouragement, and he reached her side just in time to meet the savage attack. Without hesitation, King flung himself at the leader of the wolf pack. Meantime, Preston and the constable hurried along the trail and finally came within view of the struggle in which King and Whitey fought side by side against great odds. Holy smoke, Sergeant. Look there. The wolf pack's attacking King. The other way around, Dave. King's attacking them. Whitey's there, too. Ho! 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 Come on. Use your gun, Dave. Shoot over their heads. The shot scared the wolves. They're running away. Good for you, King. He saved that white husky from the wolf pack. Yes. You all right, King? All right, boy. A few nips here and there, but nothing to bother about. Help! What? Help! The man over near the ridge. Maybe he's one of the men we were following. Maybe. Come on, King. Come along, Whitey. He seems to be alone. Doesn't even have a sled with him. That dog! Don't let him grab me! Easy, King. Oh. King won't hurt you. He's just telling me that you're one of the men we trailed from the bank in Selkirk. Yeah, I'll admit anything, tell you everything, if you'll take me back to town. Those wolves, if, if it hadn't been for that big dog of yours... Partner? He left me. I twisted my ankle, couldn't go on. He took the dog team and the gold. He's the one who shot the bank teller, too. I, I don't even have a gun. Dave, take your dog team and get this crook back to Selkirk. Over. Take Whitey with you, too. All right, Sergeant. What are you going to do? King and I will go after the other man. Uh, that white dog. Chuck, the guy who left me here, used to have a dog like that. He practically beat it to death oh. and left it along the trail a couple of months ago. I see. That's the same dog. 
Now I understand what Whitey was doing up this way. She caught Chuck's scent and was trailing him. Say, I guess that's it, all right. On second thought, Whitey can go along with King and me, Dave. Want Whitey to come along, King? All right, boy. See you later, Dave. Come on, King. Whitey, we'll get the team. Several miles up the trail, Chuck urged his dog team onward without rest. Mush! Mush, you husky! He was determined to put as much distance as possible between himself and Selkirk. But finally, he was forced to stop when the wind started to blow the covering off the sled. Oh! Oh, you huskies! Yeah. Gotta fix that cover before it blows off. Yeah, that'll hold it. Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody coming. Those dogs barking could mean that they're tracking me. I'll take my rifle and go back down the trail to that ridge that I just passed. If somebody is trailing me, it'll be too bad for them. A short distance down trail, Sergeant Preston moved along behind King and Whitey as they followed the scent of the man they were tracking, the man whom Whitey hated so strongly. Suddenly, a distant shot rang out. It was close. Too close. King! Whitey, come back! Oh, you huskies! Hold on! At the sound of the shot, Sergeant Preston had instinctively dropped to the snow-covered ground. He noticed that the shot had come from behind a low ridge just ahead on one side of the trail. He was too, but though King had obeyed his command and had come to his side, Whitey paid no attention and was heading directly for the ridge. Whitey, come back! Whitey! No use, she won't listen. Whitey knows that's the man who beat her. He's shooting at Whitey. King, wait, fella! And once more, King disregarded his master's command and headed toward the ridge with a low growl. King knew the danger of flying bullets, but once more his mate was heading for trouble, and King's one thought was to be at her side to face it. Twice more, Chuck fired at the approaching white husky. But still, Whitey went on, with King running close behind her. Then another shot came from Chuck's gun, and Whitey fell to the snow. King! King! Sergeant Preston saw by now that Chuck's attention was centered on the dogs, and with gun ready, he started forward. As Whitey fell, King barked savagely. Even Preston's voice couldn't swerve the big dog from the one purpose in mind, to drag down the man who had hurt his mate. He'll shoot King! As Sergeant Preston ran toward the ridge, he saw Chuck stand up and aim at King as the great dog lunged toward him. I'll give you a bullet, you amazing mother! No, you don't! Down my shoulder! Take him off! Down, King! Down, sir! If I didn't have to fight off those dogs, I'd have got you. Maybe, but I doubt it. I'll put these handcuffs on you so you can't pull any tricks. Look out for my shoulder. Your mistake was in beating that white dog and leaving her to die on the trail a couple months ago. Uh, holy mackerel, the white husky I used to have. Yes, and her desire to get back at you helped me capture you. All right, fellow, we'll go to Whitey. I'm sorry, Kitten. Oh. Oh. Just a slight bullet crease. I think she'll be all right, King. Look, fella, Whitey's starting to get up. That's too bad that bullet didn't finish her off. You won't be so tough when you're sentenced to hang for murder. Come on, we'll head for town. My shoulder it hurts. When we get to my set, I'll bandage it. Come on. Quiet, then, King. Oh, there's your team up the trail a bit. Get on my sled and we'll go up there. All right. On, King! On, husband! A couple of minutes later, Preston pulled up beside Chuck's dog sled. Looking for you, Husky. Watch him, boy. I'll take a look at your sled. Hmm. Oh, two bags of gold. That evidence will pinch things against you. I'll have to get both teams back to town. How are you going to drive two dog teams? I'll put you on your own sled and I'll drive it. Man can run ahead with King in charge. I'll fix that wound, and I'll take you back. Some time later, Sergeant Preston arrived at the constable's headquarters with the wounded crook Chuck. Preston was surprised to find Jed Handy waiting with the constable. All right, you inside. All right, I'm going in. One King, waiting. Well, Sergeant, I see you caught him. Yes, he gave me quite a run for it. Well, Jed, I didn't expect you back so soon. <laughs> Got back sooner than I expected. <laughs> Hello there, Whitey. <laughs> the other crook really talked, Sergeant. Cleared up a point about Whitey, too. That's right? Yeah. Seems this fella here, Chuck, was mighty mean to Whitey when he owned her. And she came to hate him. Tried to get at him every chance she got. 
She went for Chuck one day when she was in harness. That dog's a killer. Must be part wolf. Your treatment made her hate you. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, the day she went for me while she was harness was too bad for her. I beat her till she couldn't whimper any longer. Then I left her on the trail. But you still didn't make her fear you. She hated you all the more, and because of that hatred, she was determined to track you down. Yes, the principal told me about how King saved Whitey from the wolf pack. About him tracking down those bank robbers. The way they fought those wolves was sure something to see, Jed. With King at his side, Whitey really put up a fight. I'm mighty glad Sergeant Preston got the man who beat Whitey. I hope you get everything that's coming to you. He will, Jed. He had the bags of gold on his sled when we caught up with him. And with the evidence given by the other crook, he won't have a chance to get off. I wish the wolves had have got Bill the squealer. If it hadn't have been for that white husky coming at me and that dog, he shut up. You. You've done enough talking. King's sure a great dog, Sergeant. King thinks Whitey is too, don't you, King? <laughs> I'm sure grateful to you for taking care of her, Sergeant. It was a break having Whitey with us. You know, uh, only twice in his life has King disobeyed me. And both times it was to help Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> Seems almost like King was trying to talk to you, Sergeant. Could be, Jed. Maybe he's trying to say he's as glad as we are that this case is closed. Hey, King? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Say, fellas and girls, don't forget, you now get swell new model farm cutouts on packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, you get complete models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. Build your own model farm. There are 46 different detailed scale models in all on eight different packages. You get as many as six models on a single package. Remember, these keen, new, exciting models are yours today with packages of swell-tasting Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Klondike Queen. When I went to see the constable in Oxbow, I heard about a gold strike in a place called the Valley of the Spirits. A young fellow named Jack Madison went to investigate and found not gold, but a death trap. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>